Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. As we gather in prayer, let us call to mind the mercy of God as we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to enter into these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty, ever-living God, Lead us to share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
love, we are God's children now. What, what we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. So since uh, our pastoral minister, Sandy, is not with us this evening at this Mass, um, she's taking the weekend off. Don't tell anybody I said that. Um, but anyway, I get to use her as an example. So if you're not here, beware. Um, <laughs> but one of the things that Sandy is known for is in, when, if you've, and if you've ever been on a committee or a meeting, one of the things that she will inevitably ask, and in a very good way, to help us reflect is basic, basically she'll say, what is it that we need to hear? What is it that we need to hear? And it's a very good question and a very good way to for ask everyone who is there to take a step back, to take a moment to reflect and to think. And also an invitation to say the things that really need to be said. And so that said, that same question can be applied to this weekend as we think about the scriptures that we just heard. In particular, this fourth Sunday of Easter is traditionally known as Good Shepherd Sunday. And as we see how the Lord highlights himself as the Good Shepherd in our gospel today, we need to always ask ourselves, what is it that we need to hear? What is it that we need to take away from this image of a shepherd? Because in John's writing of, the go of his gospel, Oftentimes we get parables of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you know, parables of the sower and, uh, you know, other, other parables that are mentioned in the scriptures. And John kind of uses that same concept in a more drawn-out way. And so Jesus uses this example of the shepherd and saying that he is the good shepherd. And for me, there's at least a couple things that I can say that are things that we need to hear uh, from this scripture passage about Jesus the Good Shepherd that can be useful for us in growing closer to the Lord. 
One would be this, that Jesus says that he is the good shepherd. And so when Jesus is saying he is the good shepherd, what does he mean, or what distinctions are he, is he drawing? There's a couple significant ones that we're called to pay attention to. The first of which is this, that he is drawing the distinction that he is the one who will lead the flock, to lead the flock in the right way, to all eternity, to everlasting life. Unlike what we've heard, and this can be your scriptural homework, and if you're watching this online, after Mass, Google it, but go to Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel in the Old Testament, go to chapter 34, and in chapter 34, in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel is uh, preaching and he's warning against what would be um, bad shepherds in the community of Israel, people who are not faithfully leading the flock. So leadership is not faithfully leading the flock of Israel. He is chastising or trying to correct them um, because they are a little bit more, more focused in on themselves rather than being faithful to the Lord, rather than serving the people that they're called to serve. And so he's talking about shepherds who are misbehaving or are not leading the flock adequately. And the big warning and, and for the big warning that Ezekiel is really issuing is that if you do not change your ways, destruction will come upon you. If you do not change your ways, then you, you're breaking from the Lord and, and, and things are not going to go well. And we know that when salvation, as salvation history or the history of the Israel, Israel's community has moved forward, that at one point, the northern kingdom, Israel, goes into exile, and then the southern kingdom of Judah goes into exile, and the temple is destroyed, and so there is utter destruction upon the entire community. And that often happens when people don't heed the wisdom of the prophets. And so one of the things that Jesus is doing is he's differentiating himself from the shepherds or those who were guiding the community in the past of old that was Ezekiel was talking about and saying he is the one that's going to lead us to everlasting life. Also by saying that the Lord saying that he is the good shepherd, it also raises that question that if he is the good shepherd, then there must be bad shepherds, right? And I don't want to ever really get into a situation where I, I lump a group of people into the same uh, label or dynamic or point of view. However, at the same time, um, shepherds in Jesus' time uh, did have a reputation that was rather negative. As we heard in the Gospel today, that the, she the shepherds that, who are hired, when they see a wolf coming, they vote themselves off the island and they go home. They run away. And so they don't stick around, they don't put their life on the line for the sheep, they don't help the sheep in any way, they're hired, it's like, you know, I'm just being getting my hourly wage or whatever it is, I really don't care, and then they leave. If there's a threat, they leave, they run away. And so they also garner a reputation of not being trustworthy, and, um, and, and so usually the shepherds in Jesus' time, not a great reputation. So there are bad shepherds, if you will, in Jesus' time. So he says he is the good shepherd. And he says that he chooses and does lay down his life for the sheep, for you and me. He lays down his life for the sheep. He chooses to give of himself so that we might have eternal life. And so one of the things that we need to also hear in all of this, another thing that we need to hear is that what the Lord is saying to us, he's saying to us, you are mine. You're my beloved. And I really want you to think about that, and think about, and even pray with that, thinking about the Lord saying to you directly, you are mine. You are my beloved. Because sometimes, this is not to put an unfair criticism out there, but sometimes in our prayer, or sometimes in the practice of our faith, we can get hung up on just simply 
making sure that we check off the boxes of following all the commandments, or that we just simply tell God what we need. And not that those aren't important things. They are important things. They have their place. But if we are not listening to the voice of the shepherd, if we're not listening to God speak to us and taking time for reflection and for silence, then the truth is that we're missing out. We're missing out. And one of the things that oftentimes you'll hear me speak about in homily is our relationship with the Lord and how important that is. And it is important to make sure that that's nurtured and it gets, it's deepened and it grows and it grows and it grows. And one of the ways in which our relationship with God grows is if we indeed take time to listen to the shepherd, to listen to God speaking to us in prayer, his beloved, saying, you are mine. And it's important that we listen to the shepherd because this relationship, it's everything. It leads us to eternal life. And one of the things that we know very clearly in our world today, there's no secret, there's no masking that our world is crying out for so many things in its brokenness, whether it be love or mercy, justice, peace, truth. I'm sure we can fill in the blank with a bunch of other things, but our world is crying out for those things that are eternal, the things that God gives to us. And so to receive true wisdom, insight, direction, it is that we need to listen to the shepherd. That he will guide us in the right path, those green pastures. But also as we hear both in the first reading, which references our psalm today, Psalm 118, the stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. We recognize that that stone that's been rejected is Christ himself, yet he becomes the foundation. And so it tells us that no matter what adversity we face or difficulty we face, or sometimes when it's really hard to stay firm in our faith or stay convicted in our relationship with the Lord, that he was once rejected too. But he's become the foundation. He's conquered the grave. And so if we stick with the Lord, no matter what we face, it reminds us that we are anchored in the right place, that we will have peace and security no matter what comes to us, and that we will be led in ways that are everlasting. And so it is that we need to listen to the shepherd's voice to guide us through sometimes these dark places in our world, these dark experiences. But also along that same vein, when we cultivate our relationship with the Lord, when we listen to the Lord speak to us, it also strengthens us to do God's will. And we're, what do we need to do to look towards, to see an example of that? Well, it's in our first reading today. St. Peter is saying, you know, what, how, is he, how is it that he and the other disciples are healing people? But it is in the name of the risen Lord, of Jesus Christ. But if we think about the entire arc of Peter's story, we think about Peter who was once called, who followed Christ, who oftentimes put his foot in his mouth, who ends up denying him, who ends up fearful in a locked upper room, and yet once he receives the Spirit after that Pentecost moment after they're sent out, he's putting his life on the line, he's boldly proclaiming the truth of the risen Lord. He's proclaiming, boldly proclaiming the gospel to everyone without hindrance, without fear, without anything. He's boldly proclaiming and putting himself out there, giving witness and testimony to the good news of Jesus Christ. And what is it that can make the difference other than the shepherd and listening to the shepherd's voice? Because what that speaks to is the indwelling presence of God because the Lord also says in our scripture today, Jesus is saying that the Father and I are, are one. And what the Lord is telling us is that when we listen to his voice, a good shepherd 
That's a sign, that's a presence of our union with Christ. And that's one of the reasons why we're here today. When we come to Mass, when we receive Jesus in the Eucharist, we are literally receiving Christ into our very being. And it continues to remind us that that's the intimacy, that's the union, that's the closeness that God desires for us to have with him. That we are one. And so also listening to the voice of the shepherd echoes that same sense of dwell indwelling of God's presence in us, growing closer to him. And so the presence of God continues to deepen within us when we listen to the voice of the shepherd, the voice that's going to lead us towards things eternal, to things that eternally endure to all eternity. So what is it that we need to hear this week in our prayer, in our relationship with God? One suggestion is this, to simply take a moment and, and really listen to the Lord say to you, you are mine. You belong to me. You're my beloved. I love you. And also in our prayer petition, Another thing that we can be looking for is that we know that the Lord is going to speak to us. Sometimes we have to take a moment in silence and listen. Sometimes we need to look for signs. God will give us signs of, in, in response to our prayers. And so when the Lord is speaking to us, when the Lord is giving us signs, in order to judge their authenticity and make sure that we're not like doing things on our own or we're just... You know, we're not just hearing the things we want to hear. Take those things to prayer and think about, is what we're hearing and what we're thinking, is that aligned with the scriptures? Does that align with the commandments, the teachings of the church? And if all those things ring true, that's the way the Lord is, that's the direction the Lord is guiding us to go. That's the voice of the shepherd at work. Brothers and sisters, Jesus says to us, He is the Good Shepherd, leading us to everlasting life. This week, may we listen to Him. May we seek to deepen our relationship with the Lord, a relationship that gives us strength and courage, the ability to face all adversity, and continually ask in our prayer and our reflection, Lord, what is it that I need to hear from you today? Just to respond faithfully. Because we know that that faithful response is everything that we need and it leads us to eternity with him in heaven. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us tonight and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with Scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We place our trust in the Lord now and present to him these prayers of intercession. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That pastors and ministers guide their flocks with tender care. We praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That governments carefully guard the safety and quality of food and water. We praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians spread the peace of Christ and the joy of Lord, hear our prayer. For Father Bill Carr and Faye Becker, that they may enjoy the blessings of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of this assembly share God's abundant peace with those who could not be here, especially the sick and homebound, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may intercede for one another as we mention our many needs and intentions in the silence. Lord, in your mercy and grace, we ask that you hear these prayers and grant them according to your will. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The second collection is Catholic Home Mission. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit to the earth and work with human hands, you'll become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit to the vine, work with human hands, will become our spiritual drink. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But it's time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us, never pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. 
similar way when his supper was ended he took the chalice and giving him thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer to each other a sign of peace. Our communion hymn is Shepherd Me, O God, 458. Shepherd Me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd.
pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures to sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Those taking the Eucharist to home bow, please come forward. Share your sins because of Christ's spirit. Share my heart. Share my heart. Share my love. Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Our closing hymn is Rain Down, number 600.